Okay, and our final video for the cartoon jumble. At the end, I just used what are called layer effects to color my black and white merged layer that's all cut out. So there is no white background on this layer. I just like to have it turned on so I can see it clearly. And with that layer effect, I can fill it with a color. That's one way we can color it. Another way we can color it with layer effects. So you double click on the gray of the layer there. Instead of a color overlay, I could try a gradient overlay. And this is a more dynamic type of coloring where you have a lot more control. Uh, the gradient options you see here are some of the defaults. I, I always like kind of the warm to cool. Let's put it at full opacity so you can see. There's different rainbow ones. And then you can play with the different angles. And you can play with whether it's a linear gradation or a radial gradation, right? Or a diamond gradation. But most importantly, and this takes a little bit of time, you can customize these. Right? So you don't have to take one of these defaults, but take something that's kind of close. This one's made to be like a metal texture. Right? But what if I want to turn that into a rainbow metal? I can click on any of these, double click, and replace the color with whatever I want. Right? Something of the same value or something different. Using our color spectrum. I can click on the gradation and add a new gradient color anytime I want. Not only that, I can actually move it around, <laughs> you know, and change the gradient in real space. Right? So you have tons of options with the gradient tool. And then if that wasn't enough, you can combine the gradient overlay with the color overlay and just take the opacity of the color overlay down so that it lets the gradient come through, or change the blending style so that one comes through. One that's often done for kind of vector imaging is what's called dissolve, which breaks up the opacity of the color overlay into discrete little sand textured pic pixels. You can kind of see that on the, uh, on the projector, but you can see it very clearly on the screen, right? which gives a graininess to your fills, which looks a less, little less digital and a little bit more traditional. So there's just all kinds of different ways. So let's say I like that gradient. What's nice about effects on layers, these are called layer effects, um, is they can be turned on and off. And their overall opacity can always be lessened or not. So you just have a ton of control. And then I can go back in and change my gradient a little bit. Or even do this. Command J, duplicate the layer. But on that gradient overlay, change it to a rainbow. Right? And then just take that opacity down and do it at a different rotation. So now I have two different gradients overlaying each other at a different rotation. just chaos. Okay, so that's one another way you can color. You can also, in effects, add a drop shadow, and you can control that with all these different settings of how close you want it to be, how sharp, how smooth. Let's up this opacity so you can see that a little bit better. Yeah, and it can look 3D that way, or like it's, you know, thick cardstock lines that you've cut out. And then I'm going to show you the most complex method, which we'll learn a lot better through our assignments. I think that drop shadow is still too strong, so let me take that down. Let me change the angle a little bit. Collapse the distance, and it's going to make it a really subtle drop shadow, and then soften it out. And then you can always just turn them on and off and see what difference that makes. Right. Okay, but then the most dramatic way you can replace your black line work with color, 
remember these are just black lines, is you can cut it out of a whole new material that you composite in. So I'm going to go back to Google Image Search, just like we found our, our images to begin with, Google Images. I'm going to look this time for, let's say, uh, fun cartoons. Oh. And then lovely to have someone, two people peeing for the first thing. You never know what Google is going to give you. But then I'm going to go to Tools, and I want to limit it to larger than, this time, 10 megapixels. Because this we want an image source that's big enough to cover everything. And now I'm just looking for some, some fun kind of colors. I don't know if fun cartoons is going to do it. This might. Oh, this looks good. Ooh, this looks great. All right, yeah. So some cheesy kind of 90s comic, right? First, I have to check if it's big enough. Right click, open image in new tab. It does not look big enough. It is mislabeled. It's a shame. I like that one. I think fun is just not, yeah, I'm going to say vintage, inspired by Lily's bag, a vintage comics background, really large. So here we have a lot of kind of sunburst options, ooh, this is nice, going very vintage, all right, ooh, this is cool, but it's too small. I spend way too much of my time image searching for things. But it makes you visually literate. All right, let's go for something a little bit more contemporary. Open image and new tab. Make sure it's large. There we go. That's going to work. Okay, now I'm going to take this whole thing, save it to the desktop. I can see it there. Minimize Chrome. Bring this in on top, right? And it should be big enough to scale and fill the space. It just looks small because it was so long. I can stretch it. I can even warp it now. That's a new feature in this version of Photoshop that you can warp smart, smart layers. Right. Like I'm wrapping it as a gift. And this is my wrapping paper. I need enough to cover all of it. Now I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to my, my layer cutout. And I'm going to use that magic wand again with contiguous turned off and select the empty white space. There's no white in it. We already deleted that, right? But this is just the empty space. Now this is the new thing we haven't done. I go to select and say invert that selection. So select the inverse, the opposite. So now select all the pixels that are there instead of the empty space. Then, just so you can see it, I'm gonna turn off the eyeball. What I'm gonna do is move this selection onto my wrapping paper, right? Because selections can move between layers that you select. Select that wrapping paper layer, and then hit Command-J, which will stamp and duplicate only that selection onto a new layer. Then I turn off the wrapping paper, and there I have it. So now it's cut out of that comic, right? And if you look closely, you can see Captain America's stripes in his face, right? And Iron Man and all those colors. But is the artist that made this going to recognize their work in this? Not likely, right? And if I want to mess with it further, I can go to image adjustment and play with hue saturation and make it really intense. It's kind of fun or change its uh, color spectrum completely, or lighten it, or darken it. So I might lighten it a little bit, make it more saturated. So now what does Captain America look like? You know, really pink. And now I've got all these different options. I've got that, I've got this, I've got this, right? And I can layer them all on top of each other at different opacities until I find what I want. So that one's at 89%. This one I'm going to put at 100%. This one I'll keep at 
39. Uh, maybe a little bit more. I like it more. And I can play with layer styles. Soft light might work pretty well. Or pin light. Oh, that one's nice. I like those kind of hot pinks. Okay, so let's say that that's my final. Now, how do I save this? Well, always you want to say file, save, and that will save it, it will update your PSD file, the one with all the layers, right? But to save my color version to put into the class photo bucket, I'm going to turn off the white background so the color is just floating on this gray grid, this empty space. I have a slight drop shadow in there, remember, with these effects. And I'm going to leave that on. And now I'm going to save it as a PNG. And if I want to, I can crop it a little bit with the crop tool and close a little bit of this excess space. Whenever I use the crop tool, I'm thinking, how would it look good in a mat or in a frame? How much negative space do I want? Okay, so once it crops, I turn the background off, and now I say file, save as, keep the same name, to the desktop, and go not to JPEG, but to PNG, because I don't want it to save as a rectangle, I want it to be a free-floating icon. PNG. And then under PNG format, yeah, you just want the, the large file size. PNG is just a different way of compressing data. Now, let's look at the difference between the two. If I open up the PNG with preview, just double clicking it, notice that the background is a light gray, which is preview's way of saying there is no background. And if I open up the JPEG of my black and white one, notice how it's bright white, right? That's because JPEGs fill in empty space with bright white. Now we're going to do a little extra thing just to prepare your icon, and I can definitely help you with this individually. I'm going to take that PNG, and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So for now, I can save my Photoshop file because I cropped it. I might even turn off these layers, not delete them, just turn them off, and turn off the effects, and then save it again as a JPEG because I like that cropping. So if I keep the same name and I save it to the same place, to the desktop, Command, Command D to navigate there, and then as a JPEG again, it's going to ask me if I want to replace the JPEG I already saved. And in this case, I do want to replace it. Right. And then I, I just want it under five megabytes, and it is. Okay, so now I've got a JPEG, and I've got a PSD, and I've got a PNG. Those are the three file types we want for this exercise. Now I can close it or minimize it for now. And we're going to make a duplicate of this PNG. By, to do that, we are going to right click on it and say duplicate. So you can duplicate whole files just from the desktop. And the only difference is I'm going to change its name. It's Carl, Exercise 1, Cartoon, Jumble, He-Man, Copy, right? Actually, I don't even need to change the name. I just want you to notice that it says Copy. <laughs> so now on your copy, you're going to open that up in preview by double-clicking. You'll see that light gray background if you saved it without the white background, which is good. Now we're going to go to Tools within preview and change the size. We're going to make this the size of a desktop <coughs> icon instead of a size that's able to be printed. It's like image size in Photoshop. Right now it's, it's 9 by 12, or a little bit larger than that, at 350 pixels per inch. I'm going to change it from inches to pixels, right? Because that's true resolution. How many pixels is it? And I'm going to make it 450 pixels wide by whatever number of pixels tall, right? Doesn't matter the resolution because I'm setting the pixels. Then I say, OK, it's going to be tiny. There we go. But that's icon size. So if I zoom in on that, I can see those pixels really clearly. OK, now I'm going to say Command-A to select all of it. 
Command C to copy it. 